and part four, I guess, Avengers 3D Thoughts, sorry, 3D Avengers 4 Avengers Endgame Thoughts Film, and yeah, my back is better than it was yesterday, so we're continuing. I guess it's, it's not really going to make a lot of sense. I, I'm pretty sure all of these parts are going to go up on the same day, but I watched the movie on the 24th. I record this on the 25th. You know, the, the previous parts were all recorded on the 24th. Now, we start with notes taken before watching. And let's see. I just, briefly before, I just read the... I meant to before I started recording at all, but I forgot to before I started recording at all. I read the IMDb fact, the IMDb trivia points that were under in the spoiler section. It didn't say if that really was Natalie Portman, which was one of the things that I really wanted to know. But the... yeah. It's... maybe there will be some confirmation later on. Maybe it's... I don't know. I haven't looked everywhere. Maybe it's in a... in or will be in a an article like screen junkies maybe I don't know. anyway now there's a spot yeah a nerdist video called the 13 details hidden so yeah they they mention that you know cap has his shield back now they don't mention in this video but seeing it again now, I realize that's the shield that has stripes on it, which means it's the shield he used before the second Captain America movie, which suggests that it's via time travel. Although, now that I think about it, isn't the... Isn't it the shield that he got from Tony? Or wait, was that the... Sh you know, uh, yeah, maybe that was the shield that got cut in half. Did he still have a shield after that? I'm not entirely sure. Anyway. And, yeah. These are some of my own notes. This is not off the video. I hope this balances the villain presence well. For one thing, this movie cannot just be the... Uh, let's see. Yeah. Cannot just be the Avengers keeping the stones away from Thanos for an entire movie since, you know, Infinity War really handled him getting them all over the course of the movie. So you can't do something too similar to that. And I do think that this does a good enough job because you have, it's really, is it maybe the last third of the movie where Thanos is actually involved again because he dies like 15 minutes in. And then, you know, maybe around the halfway point, you know, the idea of, oh, we'll, we'll travel in time, and, well, Thanos is looking for the stones in 2014 on Morag. Or, you know, he doesn't know from right away that they're on Morag, but, you know, once he finds out, that, you know, he knows that he's looking for one. He, he knew that it was an Infinity Stone before Ronan did. Now, the... Yeah, it seems like... It seems loud to me. I had another fan installed in my main computer, and now, yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like... When I say nothing, the, the volume measurement thing on the software is complete. Yeah, and I, I did record a test before, and there was no... It's, it's just, it hums louder than the one I used before. Terribly sorry if there is a hum on this video, but I really don't think there is. I I don't usually record... Yeah, anyway. I It's really only in the last third that Thanos is aware that all the stones are that close. You know, that they're... That, that you know, in, in 2014, he thought he was going to have to get one after another. And then, he, you know, because of the two nebulas, he learns that he can get all five if he travels to 2022. So, yeah, I would say it's only really the last third. It's really only the climax itself. If you really, if you want to be completely, 
just cut it down to the bit. It's really only in the climax itself that Thanos is consistently trying to get the stones and the the gauntlet. I really love the. I mean, again, people theorized Tony Stark can probably build a gauntlet that you know they they don't because obviously the gauntlet. Unless, yeah, the, the original Infinity Gauntlet does not appear to, you know, change in size. I guess possibly with, like, Ant-Man, but with Ant-Man, it doesn't change from, like, huge to smaller. It changes from huge to just tiny, you know, or, or normal size to huge. So they had to make another glove, and that glove fits anyone because it's, you know... It's, it's Stark tech, and he can make these things that just, you know, the, the, his, his original suit, you know, closes around his body, you know, it's not just he, yeah, you know, so, so of course he can make things that can go smaller or bigger based on, so Hulk can use it, Thanos can use it, and Tony Stark can use it, but yeah, the, you know, with Thanos trying to get the, the Tony Stark Infinity Gauntlet. Yeah, really really only the, the very climax that that's... Yeah, and I do think that that's a good way to... Again, you know, the... The, the movie could easily not have had Thanos return at all. And when you see him die, at first you don't you think, okay, I guess that's that's Thanos. I mean, he was in the entire entirety of Infinity War, so he doesn't have to be in the entirety of Endgame. You know, maybe he doesn't appear. And then with the time travel and the two nebulas, you you realize, oh no, he can come back. And yeah, the the you know, and, and he'll have all his generals still. You know, unlike if they fought him in just in 2022 when the, the, yeah. And, you know, Captain Marvel tells us he doesn't even have the warship anymore. Now, the, but, but yeah, the, the bringing it back to, basically, yeah, you could say that the climax of Infinity War and Endgame is Thanos trying to make sure that he has the gauntlet and all six infinity stones and they they do it differently enough that it doesn't feel i when when watching the climax of this i wasn't at any point like you know this is a lot like infinity war because really infinity war you're you're focusing a lot on the the fight between you know they're they're you know thanos is not the only person trying to get to vision the, the generals are, and, you know, I mean, I, I don't know if the, the alien forces are quite enough. I don't know. I mean, they, they seem they seem like wild animals almost. I don't know if they, they would be able to, like, restrain vision and, and try either try to rip it out of his... Or, or, like, pick him up and carry him to Thanos or whatever. But they're trying to overwhelm the, the other of, of Avengers, you know, Avengers, and, and I, I think I said in one of the other videos that I guess technically Doctor Strange and Black Panther aren't really Avengers members. Really, at the, in the climax, I guess everyone's an Avenger, isn't, uh, technically, you know, and, and that is, I mean, there have been times where there have been, like, dozens of members of, yeah, yeah, every, every named character is an Avenger, and then there are the the backup forces to them. You know, it's it's you know maybe not every single of the of the wizards is a you know infinite and an Avengers member. Anyway, yeah, I want to briefly say I know that other people think that you know ah oh, but you have this army but they're all just faceless and they're the exact same, so it's not exciting. Agree to disagree. I love it. I I've honestly. The, the moment that that became a thing, that there were, like, big faceless armies for the good guys to fight in action movies, I thought it was a great thing because we want to see these guys take out a lot of, you know, and when they're fighting the, the named ones, you can only have so many named ones, even if you give them almost nothing, like, no, no personality and such, you can only have so many, and, yeah, I... I and especially if you do, I, I think it's about the world building 
that you know if they're if they're interesting enough in design you know yeah yeah i you know last saturday i watched the 1998 nick fury agent of shield movie and it's not a good movie it's it's fun if you if you just you know if it's the kind of thing you can enjoy and you let yourself enjoy it but i i you know, I hold no ill will to those who just cannot, you know, it's, it's a, it's not good. It's not. But the goons in that are these guys, you know, Obscurus Lupa calls them Mr. Clean. Yeah, like, like, I think maybe, maybe it would have been, maybe she should have said re, reanimated Mr. Clean. Because they're all like pale face, but yeah, bold, and they, there's nothing to them. They're not interestingly designed, so I don't care about them, you know, but the, the, I mean, in, in the first Avengers, there's one that, where, that takes off the, the, I guess it's not a mask, it's like armor, right, it's like a helmet, and it, like, opens a mouth, and, like, screeches, I don't understand why you don't think that's, cool. that means that every single one of them looks like that under, and, and in Guardians of the Galaxy 1, you, most of them you don't see the face, but one of them, and again, like the mouth of, like it's like it's a predator mouth almost, and it has this badass voice, uh, you know, John Do Odanta. Just I don't. Besides the point, right? To get back to my note, the um, let's see, yeah, I, you know, some people theorize there might be a completely different villain, and yeah, I know in that case I really hope it doesn't get rid of Thanos in a way that is too early in the movie and anticlimactic. And again, I mean, it should be the the part where he dies really early. That should be super anticlimactic. But I wasn't disappointed. But yeah, and I know you know similar to Strucker in Age of Ultron, Crossbones Civil War, Loki and Ragnarok, and yeah, maybe I shouldn't. Yeah, I was going to mention outside of MCU example, I only wrote down the one, but, and, and yeah, I'm not going to, I don't think, the only one of those that really bothered me was Loki in Ragnarok. I would, I, do, I forget if I've said this on camera before, so I'll say it now, so it's been said at least once. I think it would have been interesting if basically Loki sided with Hela, and if the movie was... I'm not saying it has to be set only only on Asgard, but I do, I feel like the movie got hijacked by the Planet Hulk, and then they don't even do Planet Hulk properly. We only get to see Hulk fight one time. I mean, I don't have a count, but he fights so many times in that comic story, which is kind of what we want to see. Why would you put the Hulk in gladiator attire if we're only going to see him fight once. That's such a complete waste of potential. And it used to be my, 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 like, tagline? What's the, my catchphrase on this, on this channel that, you know, what do I hate more than anything? Wasted potential. I'm not going to get off on more of a Ragnarok rant, rant a, a Ragnarok. I think it would have been cool if the, the I, I like when Loki is basically the main villain and in Ragnarok he has nothing to do. You know, I saw this meme where someone said, you know, Loki according to the, the fandom and you have this like, you know, basically more or less what he looks like in, in Avengers, you know, the, the, the soup that's like green and black, I think, or wait, is that from, is that from Dark World? Well, anyway, does he wear it in both? I'm not, I don't notice that too much. Anyway, you know, when I look at Loki, I look at his face. I look at Tom Hiddleston's amazing performance. I, I just listened to, to Film Brain's review of, m most of his review of uh, Dark World, I completely forgotten. He actually said that he didn't think Loki was that strong of a villain in the first Thor movie. I, because you don't exactly know what, you know, he, his motivation is unclear. That's the point. That's what Loki, you don't know where, you don't know what he's going to do next. When he's like, I doubt, I sincerely doubt that Matthew Buck is ever going to watch this video. But if you are, I'm not 
I'm not yelling at you. I'm just frustrated that there is this misunderstanding of the character. When you see him standing there with Laufey, you're like, what is he? And, and then he says, you know, I was the one who let you in. Oh no, I want you to kill Odin. Oh no! And, and then he tried, and then Loki kills him, and then he tries to use the Bifrost to commit genocide so that he's the only one left of his species, because then it won't be. That is, that is some of the best villain writing in such a long time. And people are like, I don't know, I mean, he's, his motivation is a little unclear. He's a complex character. Again, I'm not yelling at any person in, specific, in particular. I just, it's so frustrating when people, like, when they see something amazing and they're like, I don't really understand it, so it must not be amazing. Just, just take some more time to really think about it. Why is it unusual? And might it be good that it is? Right, so the, the yeah, I, I don't, when, when Strucker was defeated really early on in, in Ultron, you know, he's defeated by Captain America and then he's killed by Ultron. I wasn't, that, I, mean, I could understand people who were because the post credit scene said that he was going to be like a, a villain, he was going to be a presence. You know, why bother having him in a post credit scene if he's not going to be in very much of a movie? You know, and the, let's see, I mean, I, I guess one could also say Clow. Claw? Ah, crap. I'm sorry, I can't remember how you pronounce it. Andy Serkis. You know, in, in both Age of Ultron and uh, Black Panther, but I mean, I've heard people say that he's coming back because in the comics he's basically, he is a sound wave, like a living sound wave. I think that's really cool. And I could definitely see him return in Black Panther 2. So, yeah. And if they find a way to bring back Michael, yeah, Killmonger in a way that doesn't feel like a cheat, I am all for it. I, I would watch 10 movies, nine movies where he's the main villain. I would watch a spin-off TV series about Killmonger. He is such a compelling character. Anyway, but yeah, and, and Crossbones and Civil War, because at least it really matters. You know, his, his death is not meaningless. He wanted to beat Captain America. And he kind of did. That's that's really cool, you know. Like like Sam says, won't be a, won't be a problem if he sees us coming. He kind of hates us. And yeah, I mean, he didn't necessarily. He thought he would be able to kill Captain America, but he you know he defeated the Avengers. He tore apart the Avengers. Now. I know this is not necessarily a popular opinion, but personally, I love all MCU movies, though not equally much. Yes, even Iron Man 2 and Thor 2. I'm really, I, I, I guess I, I, I get the Thor 2 hate, but I've never, I've never taken part in it. Like, I, I, I heard someone say that it's like, it's just, it's not bad, it's just kind of average and not the most memorable. And, I mean, I, can, I can't say if it's memorable or not, because I've watched that movie five or six times at least. I watch it every time Thor is in a new movie. So, wait, okay, uh, just briefly, yeah. Thor, Thor, Thor. So, so, Age of Ultron, Infinity War, Thor Ragnarok, I know I didn't get those in chronological order, and now Endgame. Okay, so at least four times. Yeah, and, and the first time. Yeah, at least five times. I think it's, I think some of the action is really, really great. I, I keep getting bogged down. I don't think it's a bad movie. And Iron Man 2, I think it's, its greatest crime is that it doesn't live up to the first. It, again, it's just, it's kind of average. It's not that bad. I personally, I think, I, I still really don't like the characterization of the the what's he called yeah the 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 villain that isn't played by mickey rourke you know i just why is he so bad at doing arms like you know developing weapons if he's the second best 
I just, I don't buy that Tony Stark is the only person that could get, like, in, in, a, in America that could convince, that, that, like, I just, why would, why, and I just feel like, like, I mean, on some level, John Favreau, he started out as a comedy director, and he likes to do comedy, and I just feel like the comedy works in the first, because he doesn't, he doesn't ask you to buy that any of the major villains are just completely incompetent. I mean, I guess, I, I could imagine that some people would say the, the, like the really cheery guy who, you know, the first guy who walks in when, when, you know, Tony's in the cave and he walks in and Jensen translates him and, and says, you know, I, it's a pleasure to meet Tony Stark, the most famous serial killer in American history. You know, that guy is maybe a tad naive for just buying that they're making the missile, but I mean, it's, it's Tony Stark's backstory. What are you going to do? You know, it's, and it's a compelling backstory. So anyway, now I, yeah, I was wondering if the movie's ending, if the mid credit scene and or the post credit scene would involve mutants. Maybe a leg steps into frame and we hear snicked and see Wolverine's claws extend into frame. And I, I heard maybe Nerdist uh, talked about it that like it's going to be several years, was it four or five years before they can even, was it before they can even start or before they get to put out, a movie? I'm, I'm not entirely sure, about the, the you know, the X-Men. So I get that they couldn't be, you know, but could they have what audiences would guess is that character? I, I don't know. Anyway, the, the... Let me think. Yeah, ultimately, you know, I've already talked about in one of the earlier parts of this that there is no main project. Yeah, it's IMDb, you know, someone pointed out, it's the first time in the MCU since The Incredible Hulk, which is, yeah. It's still, it's still incredible that they actually, the very first MCU movie, Iron Man, they actually put the movie, the, the scene isn't it at the very end of the credits? I think it's at the very end of the credits. And then with, with like the first Avengers movie, Joss Whedon put one after the first few minutes of credits and then one at the very, very end of the credits. People actually sat through the end credits because we heard there's gonna be something there. That wasn't something people used to do, you know? And they actually, and it's the teaser for the Avengers. I mean, I, I don't know if that was like, if, if The Incredible Hulk, the reason that technically there is a post credit scene, it's just not after the credits. It happens right before the credits, but it's a teaser. You know, the, the defeated general is sitting there and like, reload, reload, you know, and, and in walks Tony Stark. And he's like, you know, and, and he says, we're putting a team together. Who's we? And then, you know, smile and then cut. That's that's a post credit scene, but they put it at at the start, and I can imagine that someone was like, "People aren't going to sit through the credits for these. We we have to put it up front." It's it's yeah, it's daring, and it paid off. Now, <laughs> well, yeah, I get, yeah, yeah. Actually, what I wrote here is, I imagine this will be closer to Avengers one and two than three was. A smaller group of good guys. So they tend to get to do more, where three had a little concentrated action for basically everyone. And again, I love that about Infinity War. I, there's almost nothing about Infinity War that I don't love. I, I'm not even saying that, oh, there's a thing that's genuinely bad. No, I'm saying I, I love almost every single thing. Like, and anyway, the, the, right. Yeah, that is basically, I, th I think it was very smart to have them travel to different, you know, three different time periods, so we have three small groups. I mean, the largest of the groups is the one that goes to the the, to the first Avengers movie, and it's only three people, you know, Tony Stark, Steve, and Ant-Man. And the other two groups are literally both composed of two people. You know, you have Rocket and, and Thor in, in Thor the Dark World, and then you have the, Nebula and Rhodey in Guardians of the Galaxy 1. You know, that's... I really think that was... that was. Oh, sorry. Hulk is in New York. So there's four people. 
It's just that he's not, he spends a lot of it just trying to convince the Ancient One. You know, the others get to run around a bit more. That's why I, yeah, I'm very sorry. I, I, I almost never forget the Hulk. I, I really, I, I read that it's like, this is the last movie where Mark Ruffalo will play Hulk and Bruce Banner. I don't, sorry, I already talked about this in the other, anyway, yeah. And, let's see, yeah, and I was wondering if the movie is going to be at least partially within a Doctor Strange time loop. And it's unlikely that such was starting in Avengers 3, since the period of time passed between it and Avengers 4. But could be started use, in this using the time stone. And I think, I mean, ultimately, the... I, I'm glad that they did it the way they did it. I, I think if they were going to do a time loop, they shouldn't have gone to more than one different time period. And maybe, you know what, it might be fun if, like, there's, there's like, a, a TV series coming out, right, about, like, Scarlet Witch. Do they call her Scarlet Witch? Do they, don't they all just call her Wanda? I, f I forget. Anyway, the, the, yeah, and, and Loki, I don't know if it would fit in that, but, like, an episode of a TV show set in the MCU where the entire episode is, like, a time loop. And they keep having to go back and, and fix something. I, th I think that could be a, a fun. Anyway. Now, let's see. And... Let's see. Yeah. Right. And the end game official trailer 2. And... We have the black and white footage with red highlights. A la Sin City. And others have also pointed out, like Schindler's List, but I'm, I'm sorry, if there's some, if, if yeah, I, th I think of Sin City before I think of Schindler's List, when it's, it's you know, yeah, like, in a, in a lot of cases. And yeah, Hawkeye's teenage daughter, she was an arrow accurately, Lila maybe, she's maybe seven years, yeah, sorry, it was said in, in Age of Ultron, yeah, she's maybe seven years old in Age of Ultron. Must be 11 in Infinity War and a teenager here. And we have more black and white footage from earlier films. Which I guess technically it might be the same actress if she really was, like... I'm, I'm not sure it is, but the, the, you know, Age of Ultron was 2015. Well, this was filmed in 2018, though, anyway. And... Yeah, some of this is just me noting stuff that, and I've, I, I like that they show, you know, Ant-Man jumping, like, there's, there's like a pencil, that's from, like, the last 40 minutes of the movie or something, when, you know, they said that the stuff was from the first 15 minutes, but they also said that the title of this movie wouldn't be spoken in Infinity War, so, yeah, but the, the, I, that was really cool because you spend the whole movie waiting for that and you're like that looks like okay things have gotten real here and it, it really you know and and you know Hawkeye in the in the tunnel and the yeah and yeah and then in the white uniform yeah Steve, Nebula, Ant-Man, Barton, Rhodey, Tony, and Natasha. I am really... That was the doorbell, excuse me. 